Hey, welcome back. This is Code Makes It Go. And as you saw in my last video, we were going to intercept the protocol coming from this controller and the unique Q5. Where is the unique? We're going to intercept the signal coming from the controller and the Q500 quad. And we have done that. So we have real time mapping that we can display. And I'm going to show you how you can do it yourself. Also, big announcement, I have our very first giveaway um, for Code Makes It Go, so a little bit of celebration. Woo! So I'll tell you what that giveaway is soon, but first, what is this protocol? Let's have a look. All right, here's a look inside the controller, and before we knew this was a Zigbee, we had to find out where the communication controller was. So the easiest way to do that is the following the antennas. This large antenna here is a Wi-Fi antenna for the video. But the smaller antenna here and here are for the Zigbee. And these connect to this controller board here. So this will give us our first clue of where to look to figure out what is this thing speaking. And our answer lies in these two chips. By looking at the numbers on these chips, we can pull up the data sheets to figure out what they are. This little chip is an RF range extender. The larger chip is a CC2530. This microcontroller is specifically designed for Zigbee applications. So now that we know the Q500 is speaking a Zigbee protocol, all we have to do now is find a device that allows us to see this protocol. And to do that, I bought this little device which is called a Zigbee sniffer, and it just plugs right into your computer with a USB port, and it allows you to see and decode the Zigbee. So the Zigbee sniffer is plugged in. We have our controller on. And all we have to do now is launch the Texas Instrument packet sniffer and push play. And you'll begin to see the Zigbee messages come across. Texas Instrument made a pretty cool program here, but it's a little difficult to decode the packets with it. What I've been doing is selecting a message, then highlighting the data packets in that message, and then copying them into an Excel spreadsheet where I can decode the message. As you can imagine, this would take a very long time for a bunch of messages. But Texas Instrument has added a cool option that allows me to broadcast these messages over UDP. So now all I have to do is write a program that will receive these broadcasts so I can more easily decode them. BAM! Program done. So this is what I came up with. I call it Snagabee, and it automatically categorizes all the messages coming from the quad and the controller. Then when you click on it, it organizes them each into 8-bit chunks. So to show you how this works, this is a message from the quad, and it contains the latitude, longitude, and altitude of the quad. I figured out that the latitude starts on bit 104 and is a 4-byte value. As you can see, this program makes it really easy to realign all the bits so you can see the actual values. The resulting lat long is here. Here's another example of me decoding the messages from the ST10 controller. You can see as I move around the sticks, the values changing in real time. Having the ability to see these values changing in real time makes it really easy to discover which inputs change which values. By keeping the sticks in their default position, you can see a pattern of 800 hex. This is a big clue that each analog input is 12 bits. And as you can see, we have successfully decoded the analog input for up and down. Only thing left to do is to label it and then move on to the next. I'll repeat the same procedure for all the inputs of the controller. Here's an example of the quad message already decoded. I just wanted to show you here the roll, pitch, and heading working. I figured out these values the exact same way I did the controller. I just moved the quad around and watched the values change. From there, I just took a best guess on what the data type should be. In any case, I think I figured out most of these values, but could still use some help finding out the rest of them. So with the help of Zagabee, I have this nice spreadsheet that has most of the values that I think I figured out. I'll provide a link in the description where you can download this file. 
Now that I have the protocol defined, I need to write an application that will use the data from Snagaby and the UDP input from Texas Instrument to write a KML file that Google Earth can read so the user can look at Google Earth and control his quad better so that the Zigbee signal can be read by the Zigbee sniffer and fed back into the Texas Instrument application. All I have to do is write it. BAM! Program done. So the application I wrote is at the bottom of the screen, and it's simply just writing KML files for Google Earth to read. The purple dot is the quad in my backyard. So for this test, I'm going to fly the drone to the top of this tree and see how well it matches up to real life. The line graph at the bottom of the screen is showing the pitch and roll of the quad and the analog inputs from the controller. This is me just moving the controller around to make sure I'm getting a good signal. Okay, everything looks ready. Time for liftoff. My application is writing the KML files at 1 hertz, so you will see some delay. You can see the Zigbee sniffer lost the signal here, but I just had to fly it a little bit higher to get over the trees. Even at 1 hertz, I think it's tracking pretty well and I'm pretty impressed how well everything lines up in Google Earth. Okay, I'm going to fly back now and do the over the tree test. And here's the tree that we're going to test with. Here's an alternate camera angle of the tree and how high I am above it. You can just see the quad floating above it right now. And here it is in Google Earth. I'm actually really surprised how close this is to real life. Google has done an amazing job making 3D trees and making all the houses 3D. It's just a really cool. All right, the last clip I wanted to show you of this working is the quad landing in my backyard. I just thought it was pretty neat to watch with Google Earth. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, press the like button. And as always, please leave your comments or questions below, or you can email me here at this address. And as you probably guessed, the giveaway is the Zigbee Sniffer. So if you want the Zigbee Sniffer, all you have to do is comment below, I want to help. And after I get about 10 people that say I want to help, I will select at random one of those people and contact you and send it to you. As always, it really helps if you subscribe to the channel. That would help me out greatly. And I really appreciate you watching. Thank you. Bye.